recent years, the adverse effects of climate change have been felt globally and Kenya has not been spared. This global phenomenon has hit hard communities living in marginalized areas, commonly referred to as arid and semi-arid areas where pastoralism is the main economic lifeline. Drought has become severe, leading to massive livestock deaths every year. And when the rains come, they are short and intense, resulting in human and livestock deaths, destruction of properties through floods and emergence of hazards such as diseases. Nariposana just like other counties in the country, Siolo has also faced with many disasters. One of them is drought, frequent, persistent, recurrent drought. Uh, this has been with us for many years, and even the situation is worsening. Like last year, we had a lot of very severe drought. We lost a lot of livestock. We had a lot of emergency interventions by the government both county, national, and other stakeholders. In 2011, Partners for Resilience BFR, a consortium of four Netherlands-based humanitarian, development, and environmental civil society organizations, launched a program aimed at mitigating the effects of climate change and promote application of integrated risk management to strengthen and protect livelihoods of vulnerable communities. It's a program that's supported by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and it's called Dialogue and Dissent. And it's a five-year program. The idea of the program is to build local capacities for lobby and advocacy. And uh, PFR is doing this in 10 different countries over in three continents. What we try to do in countries uh, is to support uh, government and local civil society to translate these international agreements, which are signed by the governments, to national policies, national laws, and also um, ensure that these agreements are being implemented. And especially that these programs reach those people who are hit hardest by disasters and by the effects of climate change. PFR programs focusing on three domains, namely policy, investment and practice, all geared towards dialogue on integrated risk management. The first phase of PFR which elapsed in 2016 mainly focused on investment where communities were directly funded to adapt to climate change effects by initiating projects that would see them stop relying solely on livestock. And there was a neuro base in PFR through the local office called Aid and the implementing partners Impact and MidP have been supported, thereby empowering women economically in the patriarchal society. At the ALO, we are supported by African Conservation Center in the beginning. Uh, we planted two acres, but now we are to eight, to eight acres. Then we have the beehives, we got uh, 80 beehives from uh, African Conservation Center. Then later we get some from Impact, supported by Code 8, 25 of them. Yes, so uh, we, we do get honey, we harvest twice in a year, but our best month is uh, September because it is the time that acacia mellifera flowers, as you can see now. So this is the month that we can harvest more honey, but uh, we just uh, sell our honey locally and raw honey, we don't process. Yeah. 
a lot of issues that now people are discussing. The second phase of the PFR program, running between 2016 to 2020, now employs a different approach, that of aligning communities to county and national government on local and international policy and agreements on disaster reduction, climate change and sustainable development goals. This phase of the project uh, mainly focuses on policy dialogue and capacity building for the civil society organization. Um, when you look back, uh, when, we, uh, when we had a devolved government, there were so many challenges that came about as much as there were opportunities. One of the challenges were the issue on uh, policy formulation and also capacity strengthening of the new institutions that were in place. And as PFR, we saw the opportunity of working with county governments in building that institutional framework and maybe and also um, strengthening the institutions which are already in place. And we also realized that uh, the policy formulation um, has been also devolved at both the county level. And uh, the policies that we are actually uh, supporting are policies to do with disaster risk reduction. Uh, climate change uh, adaptation and environmental uh, policies and uh, legislations. PFR programs no longer support communities directly but instead focuses on strengthening institutional framework legal agreements to make sure that counties have law and policies in place to address people affected by disaster. PFR 1 was about service delivery like direct project implementation so in terms of uh, uh, providing services for communities, things like sinking boreholes, energy saving decals, restoration of ecosystems, and so on. PFR 2, I think the learning points were now we have done a lot, invested in the communities. So, can we link to policy and legislative frameworks for sustainability? So that from community now we move to like county level and national level. To mainstream this within policy strategies and frameworks. And that also allows in terms of government to provide resources, in terms of budget allocations, but also planning within the national planning and county planning. Linkages have also been established between national government agencies dealing with management of disasters, including the National Drought Management Authority. Through this linkage, vulnerable communities right from the village level have been equipped with knowledge and skills on minimizing the various hazards they face time to time. Usiku sina kutana. Shida yeyote ile iko area hii. Kila mtu analeta kutoka upande ile anawakilisha. Tunaweka ile shida hapa. Mfano wakati mwingine inakuja wakati ya kiangazi inagonga mifugo sasa mtu wa mifugo atalete tulipata shida fulani hivi na hivi juzi ilitugonga kwa sababu tulikuwa hivi leo tutafanya nini akija wakati mwingine sisi tuwe tayari isitugonge isi zaidi mtu awe awe ajitayarishe na ile mashinda imeleta kutoka kwa astushi yote tena tunashagua gani muhimu zaidi ya nyingine Kama tumelete shinda mbili, tatu baka kumi, tena tunashagua gani muhimu zaidi ya ingine. Hii ndio number one. Hii ndio number two. Tunapeana kwa ile watu tunasejua wateza kutusaidia. Hata kama ni county, hata kama ni NGO siyote, kama hii midi au kama kwa dead. Proposal tuna, tunapeana kwa watu. Ile ya kwanza ikichukulio ikifanyika, through the programs, communities have been empowered through capacity building where they can now register community associations fully recognized by law and use them to source funds directly from the county or national governments and other funding agencies. Subservice Dam, to Majeribu Kujanga Saddams, Ne, Ambaye, to Mesaidio Na. WSTF mbili na one ni kutoka CDF na moja kutoka LWF. Hii e, area yetu wale watu beneficiary wa hii laga ni watu e, elfu tatu. 
One of the milestones in the PFR2 program have been on legislation of disaster risk management policy and bill at national and county levels. The process of coming up with a bill on disaster management in the counties of Isiolo, Samburu, Laikipia are at an advanced stage. So this policy actually will help us plan better, coordinate better when there is a disaster, plan together as stakeholders because there are so many resources that are there, there are so many partnerships that are there, but how do we plan together to be able to have like a consolidated uh, and coordinated uh, working relationship? And lastly, how as government can we be able to also put in place resources that can be able to uh, help us in respond when there's disasters? So, IPESA, climate finance. Communities have also been linked to global fund platforms like the Green Climate Fund, GCF, which work towards climate resilience development. Several people, including the farmers, have now started understanding what the GCF is all about. What, how can they do a proposal that is targeted towards the GCF? What are the approaches of doing that proposal? Whom can they work with or who can they approach as an accredited entity for? a given proposal. We've also highlighted to them what are the what is the current status of GCF funding in Kenya, what are the projects that are in the pipeline, because we always want as the NDA not to, to duplicate several projects maybe in one specific area. That is why we were highlighting the portfolio of Kenya in different sections of by or by different entities in Kenya. Uh, in the climate finance training that we've just had, uh, various organizations are represented and have this that diversity of uh, you know expertise. So uh, one of uh, the solutions that uh, has come up is that uh, uh, organizations work together so that they are able to develop joint proposals so that they are able to submit these proposals for funding. I was very impressed uh, of uh, how they uh, managed to engage women on the uh, program because it's very uh, obvious, very feasible. And then uh, on the other hand, uh, we also very uh, much like how they work with uh, government. So I think that's uh, one thing we should also uh, learn a lot from uh, our friend in Kenya. In the last two and a half years of implementing the PFR2 programs in Kenya, tangible achievements have been made through cooperation, linkage and networking. More will be realized in climate change and management of disasters. <laughs>